that reception. Oh, man, they love you. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're, you're a high, you're a multi hyphenate, a singer, actor, producer, director, voice Bullshitter. actor. Oh, that. <laughs> But is, isn't the idea of being very successful to have to work less? Yes. I mean, <laughs> some would say working harder, not smarter. Right. I am a multi-hyphenate. I've done so many things. Musician, actress, comedian, director, songwriter. And author. what drives that? What drives all that? Oh, creativity. You know, the need to want to express myself, taking boredom. And, you know, they say... Uh, Bored idleness is the devil playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't ever want to be in the devil's playground. I just want to have fun. Yeah, yeah and you do, fun. and your work is so powerful. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm so inspired by you. Thank you. And uh, you, you chose your stage name, Nokia, because the telephone is so indestructible, and you're indestructible. I would say so. It's a Finnish company. At the time, um, I was using Obama phones, because, you know, we was just that poor. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I, I couldn't call myself Princess Obama phone, and yeah, yeah. I just... Not, I, not I, the same ring. Not no, the same ring. I, was, I was too young to have an Nokia, but um, I chose something with a futurist angle, because I liked the idea of having something old and new. And, they, you know, Disney princesses, all their moms are dead, and my mom's dead, so I figured, well, let me add a little dead humor to that as well. I love the way you mix it all together. It's amazing. Um, we're both we're both street kids. Yes, we are. You know, I, I went to the Fresh Air Fund. I survived the public, New York City public school system. Uh, <laughs> uh, how do you use your street streetness and your lens of the Latinidad to, to do your storytelling? Oh, well, I was really fortunate to grow up in an extremely vivid cultural upbringing. You know, being Afro-Indigenous was what I was supposed to do on the weekends. When my girlfriends was playing double dutch and hanging rope, I was at powwows just like, why, you know, like, I loved my upbringing. Right. But it's funny because, you know, there's so many interest, um, intersections of my childhood and there's the public school you know being in Jefferson Park with my friends and then there was the times where I didn't connect with my friends where I didn't get to have sneakers or you know be wearing lip gloss that I had to you know go to ceremonies or do yeah. go to the UN to do right, right. a performance right. <laughs> something of the, of the sort um, but I think that you know, I'm very straight. I'm very, I'm very protective. You know, I, I was taught to fight with my words in my hands. Oh yeah. And and be vivacious and be protective. Yes. And I am protective of myself yeah. and my loved ones. Yeah. No, that comes out in your work. I mean, I'm I'm such a big fan of your work because you know I feel like I see myself in you. You know, and it revitalizes me as a as an older artist, seeing like the young Latinas that have, you know, such self-worth and, and strength and vivacity and not afraid of their <laughs> power and strength. Uh, yeah. I was, I was telling John, I was telling, I was telling uh, to the crowd, is the camera here, here? I was telling uh, John earlier that he's one of my biggest inspirations. It's him and Martin Lawrence that <laughs> created my identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, feel, I feel like Martin Lawrence. <laughs> you, We're about the same height. We're both short kings. I'm there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I watched Freak, Sexaholic, Spicarama, yeah. Ghetto Clown. You know, <laughs> Thank you, like Jesus Christ. And they Christ. let you watch that inappropriate crap? Come on. No, they, they allowed me to watch yeah. it. It was the the it was our household thing. It's we we saw you and we saw ourselves. That's beautiful. Cause, <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, when I, when I wrote my stuff, I wanted to write it for all the young Latino kids that weren't seeing themselves and that they felt invisible, and I wanted them to feel like I saw them. You know, that's why I, how I wrote it. Now, you, you got your new EP coming out, yeah. right? It's already out. Um, oh, it's but already that's okay. out. That's okay. Everything is misinformed. I, but this my... is about love, right? This is... <laughs> how many rumors have you heard about oh, me? Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> But this is about love, though. This is the it's first like, time you're talking about love. You've, you've never been this vulnerable before. No. Why, why now? Um, it, was, it was the time. It was, I was speaking, I always speak from my heart. I always speak from a personal experience, you know. Uh, 1992 covers my, my life as a child growing up and all the intersections of my life from childhood to adult, you know. Uh, Girl Cut Red is about my love for rock music. Mm. Everything is beautiful. It's a neo-soul jazz 
um, album with R&B, Everything Sucks, kind of had like a ICP effect to it. It was a little bit more fun. In this, I stripped it down. I wanted to sing. I always say, when I MC, I'm happy. And when I sing, I'm sad. Like when I got the blues, I sing. Oh, so wow. I had the blues, and I was going to get married in uh, that dress, and I didn't. And um, I like oh. using. No, it's okay. That's this is. It's, it's okay. Like uh, I'm. So, I'm a young woman, and I, I. I said this to Billboard and the Insider. I said everyone is so used to me being the rapper, the strong woman, the the soup thrower. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the voice of a generation. But no one has ever heard me, or and I've never allowed myself to be that vulnerable. I don't talk about my yeah. personal life right. like on online. So no one would know who I'm dating. No one knows who I'm talking about. It's no one I've ever posted publicly. So someone could have an idea and they, they completely have no idea what's going on. So I put all of these intricate things about a failed relationship. But the takeaway of the project is really that that person was uh, in, 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 excuse me, that person allowed me to feel love. They allowed me to feel a little something. Right, right, something. Right. You know, I hadn't felt, I hadn't dated in like five years. Oh, wow. And like, I think that like, I just, you know, hooked up with a, a, my childhood sweetheart and we had a love tunnel and it was fabulous. And I it was, bet. oh, it was hot and saucy and sexy and, and then scary. But then. And, then, <laughs> but then. and then scary. And then we were gonna get married and it was gonna be amazing. And then I left because it didn't serve me. Right, right. It didn't serve my hot purpose. And I spoke to God, and God said, "Get your ass out there." And I said, "Okay." And but it, I, I, I tell him he's listened to the music. He loves the project. He, we're still good friends, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. We, beautiful. we were yeah. apart. I, I know. I. I want to go back said, to the that soup thing. What happened? What, what happened in that soup thing? I've never talked about it publicly. I'm sorry. Oh, you kidding? You, I'm not kidding. This, so I don't know if y'all know what happened. Well, well, she's going to tell you now. <laughs> I've never spoken about it publicly because um, I, public attention gives me nervous. And I was on the, the front of the metro or in the metro, and I was like, oh my God, my name's like in the paper. Right, because it I, went viral. That video went viral. I, I, I still don't realize, I realize yeah. that I'm a person of interest. Like, for me, I'm just destiny. Well, if you throw soup, hot them. soup in somebody's face, you're going to okay, be so of this, interest to a lot this of people. Is, this is what happened. This is from, this is yeah, from go, the go, horse's go, go. mouth. Um, before that man started saying slurs, a group of young men who were like on a basketball yeah. team, black and Latino brothers, and I remember thinking, wow, look at kids getting air, being outside, yeah, yeah. being healthy, playing sports. That's right. a beautiful thing. You look, oh, you, oh, my people, look at, oh, look at the young men being gentlemen. Okay. And the, 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 this man came onto the, the train and he bumped them purposely. And I, that was the first thing I seen. I seen an adult bump a child. And I thought that was very weird. And then, when they got off, he drunkenly just said these N-words. And I got up, and I said, how dare you? And I just socked him in the eye. And he called me. Wait, wait, you punched him first? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I didn't want to say wow. that. I didn't want to say yeah. that. Uh, I said it on Twitter once, but I didn't want to say that to publications in case he, like, tried to sue me. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was right, like, oh, right, man. Right. You, this... protect you. Yeah. you got some money so, now. So, so that's actually what happened. There was a whole discourse before the soup. The soup is what happens very last. What I says, you're not about to talk about black people like that. Not right. in my face. Right. I would never, like, xenophobia and, and anti-blackness, that make my skin crawl. I Absolutely. like that. And you can't stay quiet, because no. if you stay quiet, then you're, you're, you're kind of guilty. You're a day, well, yeah. people stay quiet because people are crazy. You don't know what they're capable of. He could have punched me back. He could have slapped true me. That, he could have spit on me. And I have been punched back before, standing up for myself. Mm. <laughs> I got really lucky. Um, then he started hurling racial slurs at me, and when I said what I said, I said to him very distinctly, you don't ever talk about people like that. Don't you ever fix your mouth to say something like that. A whole bunch of men came to my aid, and it was brothers, and like people just, it was like the, the train of New York just came yeah. behind my back, and these two brothers, they looked at me and said, we got you, sis. I said, okay. And then we, and then everybody, like, white, black, polka dot red, was like, you can't talk like that. That's not okay. Right, it was white men, okay it was city. white men going, dude, what's wrong with mm -hmm. you? Are you sick? And, Don't you and, love that? Don't no, you love it was beautiful. Everybody. It, was, it was like, when we're you, united. it was a rainbow oh my God, I nation. Love that. And it was so, You're gonna make so me special. cry. That kind of no, stuff makes it, me it cry made me, when we're it made all me cry together. because we all collectively threw him off the train. It was the, you see the men? Oh, man, they, that's They're beautiful. throwing him. And I, I had just went to Panera Bread and got me a butternut squash. <laughs> 
and I, that was my thing. I used to get me a butternut squash soup and go to Brooklyn and, you know, be a New Yorker. Yeah. And, and I, I was like, well, shit, I, I, I excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, well, no, you can oh, curse here. This oh, is all right. It's oh, fine. man. Well, They've he, heard worse he, from me. He done said racial slurs. He done got in my face. He done made a fool of himself. He about to get this soup, too. So I just, I was like, you know what? I've already punched him. I've already done that. That's all off camera. I, said, I remember I went to get my bag, because I was like, oh, my God, my bag. And then I was like, soup. <laughs> and, and with, without like even thinking about it, without even thinking yeah. about it, it took uh. two seconds. I swear to God, it was from 14th Street to the first stop of the L train. So you know that underground tunnel's like extra three minutes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it felt like a long time, but it was just one train stop. And it was, it was, it was wild. And I, and I stand behind that, you know? I was taught, um, I was taught to always, if you, you are about something, be about something. Mm. And I would never strike my brother, sister, unless they, you know, provoke right, me right. first. But when it comes to defending blackness, I'm, or, you know, Latinidad, being indigenous, anything, you know, that I am mixed Anybody with. is vulnerable, yeah. Absolutely. And we were just at a point in the time, society, like in society, where that rhetoric was just so, uh, you know? And right, I just, right. I, I caught that man in his face. <laughs> You got, uh, she's, but, a, she's a poetess, a singer, sensitive, and she can knock you out. I mean, th you're I'm the perfect pretty, woman. I'm pretty frail, but <laughs> I would like to think that uh, I can always, you know, if a friend is in need, I can help. Well, I'm a friend in need. If you ever need me, I, I got yeah, your back. You. Love you. Thank you for coming. You. I love you, but this is Goodbyes, available now.